I have used a variety of distributions of Linux and just GNU slash Linux even. However, it seems that after a year of using exclusively Linux on the desktop, I've kind of come to the same conclusion that, well, most people at the end of their main, at least Linux, experimentation typically meet. They typically meet the same conclusion, is that stable and clean and simple is generally better than complicated, non-structural, and beautiful to a point. And that point being some undefined, undetermined will or method, that of which is defined entirely by an individual, which is fine. However, you may have noticed in the past few videos that I'm no longer on Manjaro. I'm now back on Linux Mint, and I've learned to use Linux Mint in very specific kinds of ways. Some methods that I've actually learned from the more complicated distributions of GNU slash Linux, and those of which being things like um, the terminal, using power user applications such as Vim, which have made my life generally a lot easier, generally a lot better, a lot more simple once you go through the complication of learning those things. Now, I could install the NVIDIA driver and just use Debian. However, I love the idea that Linux Mint puts out, and that's why I use Linux Mint. I use Linux Mint Ubuntu Edition so I can improve upon what is essentially the easiest distro out there. And of course I use Cinnamon because of the fully featured, and honestly, Cinnamon is not as heavy as it's made out to be. It's certainly a lot more lightweight than Ubuntu with GNOME. Now, one of the things that typically people say you have to use is Arch Linux or Arc Linux, if you choose to say that. However, Yes, I have used Arch, and I even used a downstream distribution of Arch, which was Manjaro with XFCE. Now, of course, I will say XFCE, very minimalist, um, not a lot of features, but that's the point, too. The point is to be as lightweight as possible, and I completely respect that. That makes sense. That is their goal. And that's the great thing about having distributions, is that we can decide what we want because so many people disagree on what an operating system should be or at least aesthetically and top level functionality to a point now i for one have kind of come to the conclusion that most people in my position have come to arch linux is fun arch linux is pretty sweet it's a nice little treat but it is for a mainline user distribution it is nothing more than overrated now that's not that's not to trash on pac-man which is by far probably the in fact no it is it really very much is the best package manager i have ever used on a gnu slash linux or in fact I'll get to later on in the video, but in Unix in general, it is by far the best package manager that is out there that I have used. I haven't used the uh, Emerge package manager, or at least that's what you call out. Um, forgot the name of the package manager. It's one that Gentoo uses. Uh, Portage, that's right. I have never used Portage because I've never used Gentoo. And so I'm not going to try and say that in fact, I actually can't say that Gentoo's overrated because even Sony used it in an enterprise situation back with the original PlayStation Now. Now, if you want to use Arch Linux as your, as your workstation operating system, I'm not saying you shouldn't. But trying to introduce any version of Arch, even a simplistic one like Manjaro, I can only say probably not. And by the way, yes, Pamac along with the Arch user repository, love them. However, Debian and Red Hat, 
meets a specific need. Now, of course, if you, sorry, I mean a general need. They meet a general need. I'm sorry, I'm trying to do this just in one take. Now, a lot of people go to Arch saying, if you go to Arch, you will learn. You will learn what Linux is like. You will learn how to build your system. But that's not necessarily true. Uh, there is Arch install, but of course the reason why I left Arch is because I couldn't get that working. Um, I've installed Arch Linux the right way. Uh, twice actually. Once with doing it all the way through, and another through using Packstrap. But of course my main system that you all saw, I did that through Arch install. Now, if you're wanting to learn, I have to recommend Fun2 if you want super simple but you can learn. Um, Gen2, I recommend though. And of course, if you're a real enthusiast and you can install Gen2 without the instruction manual, um, then try Linux from scratch. Now, I also find a lot of people saying that Linux is difficult because all they want to do is just compare Windows or the Macintosh operating system to something like Arch Gen 2, uh, Slackware even, or Linux from scratch. And this is entirely an unfair concept. This is entirely an unfair argument. You should never compare a Fisher-Price toy like the Mac OS, a broken fake pistol toy like Windows, to something as complicated by design as Arch or Gen 2. Um, and of course, I find people trying to say that, sure, you can use the more basic or the more stable ones, but they're nowhere near as stable as Windows. Now, I don't know if I've ever actually pointed out why exactly I left Windows, but the reason why I left Windows is for one big problem. If you're using a computer, I'm pretty certain you need your audio to work, both input and output. And either way, that was at my last straw. There were so many reasons why I tried out Ubuntu back before I got the current PC that I have, the one where I started doing videos. I had so many issues, and I'm not the only one. The majority of people use Windows, and the majority of people have issues with Windows, respectively. But if you're actually wanting to compare these two, that is simply not fair. However, if I were to introduce someone, and I've made so many videos on this, and my website's also up, if I were to introduce someone to Linux Mint, I could probably just drop them in and they'd figure things out very, very quickly. It's certainly a lot easier than Windows, that's for damn sure. Now, let's get back to the whole thing about stability. I completely agree that Arch is a super simple, stable operating system, or rather simple once it's installed. However, I also find a lot of people trying to shell out Alpine and the Slackware operating system. Now, Slackware unto itself is stable. There is no doubt about that. It is very stable. However, problem being that it's on its own that it's stable. It's on a very limited broad range that it is stable. I say broad and limited in the same sentence because the range of software is actually quite impressive, but there's certain specific things you can't touch on. And I will do another video on that at some point. I've also covered Alpine. Now I had to redact that video. I'm not sure if I deleted it or not at this point. I need to check that later. But I did a video on Alpine, and I tried re-recording one, because I did it wrong. I've followed the instruction manual, I've done everything. It's kind of like the Arch uh, Linux manual. And this is one thing I like about Gen 2 over Arch. One thing where I can say that Gen 2 is better than Arch, which is because Gen 2 actually, even though it's so much more difficult, has way more steps, yes, but it has better documentation all the way down to the single different keystroke that you should make to do a different task all the way to different methods of doing different things decided upon by you 
Arch and Alpine are one straightforward thing, and those are not as simple as something like installing Linux Mint. But neither are they designed to be that way. But Alpine itself is highly unstable, so I could never really recommend that to somebody. So of course, I've reached the end of the Linux rabbit hole, and I've come to the conclusion Use what you want, but if you are looking for total stability out of the box, uh, Debian and Red Hat and their distributions, like Debian you have Ubuntu, and based off Ubuntu you have things like Linux Mint, and even based directly off of Debian now you have Linux Mint. Red Hat, there's so many distros around Red Hat like Sousa and Fedora. All of these are highly important, and they are by far the easiest and the most stable. Discounting um, sometimes with mainline canonical Ubuntu. But that's for a whole nother video. So, where am I now? Well, you see, this is my desktop background now. I don't know if you all noticed or not. But at this point, I've pretty much wrapped up my Linux journey. I will continue to use GNU slash Linux for a specific reason. Now, I may one day completely abandon GNU slash Linux. I have no idea yet. And there's a reason why I say this, is because I no longer actually care about Linux itself. I care about the stable operating system, right? Well, I have done enough research to learn the actual truth that's going on here. There's a reason why only on the hardware side you truly see people arguing or complaining about the Apple Mac OS because the operating system there are so many developers who use Mac OS who have now switched to Linux because it's much more popular but the reason is because it's based off next step and it's based off of BSD and Mac OS has a Darwin kernel based off of those and of course that means it is Unix that's what I truly care about now Unix and POSIX Portable software. The idea of portability to multiple different systems is important. And, well, I guess I shouldn't have said that I don't care about Linux. I do care about Linux, but not necessarily to the extent that one could view it. It's more of I care about stability. And that is, of course, why I will stick with Red Hat and Debian. And that's why I will choose. Well, to stick with Unix. So I say to all my friends who enjoy the real operating system, join me in the idea to live free or die Unix. That's all I have for this video. Like if you like it, comment if, if so, whatever. Sub if you want to catch up. I gotta go do a few more things. Have a good rest of your day. See you in the next one.